Hey, welcome back. It's Eric Arnold again on this Wednesday, September 22nd, Wednesday night, uh, here in the politics barn. And, well, you know, things are falling apart so fast in this country. There's so many stories of critical importance detailing the collapse of this country that things that would happen, you know, every month or two months in a normal time, it's happening every two to three days now. So I'm going to attempt the, basically the impossible here. I'm going to attempt to detail all the critical news that's happened since the last time I made a video, which was about five, six days ago. By my count, five major, major stories of critical importance. And because your attention span is limited, we're going to try to do this all in a half hour. So let's get to it. Let's get right to it. You know, just to kind of give you a off the top here, as I'm wasting time, wasting my 30 minutes, in order of importance, here's what we're talking about. Uh, the FDA uh, has a panel of advisors. They voted against Biden's booster plan that's uh, important to his medical apartheid plans, his uh, vaccination, forced vaccinations of Americans. So there's pushback there. That's one. Two, uh, the United States admitted that we whacked, killed, murdered uh, 10 innocent people in Afghanistan. And lied. well, we didn't admit we lied about it. That's just prima facie obvious <laughs> since we admitted that we did it. Uh, so that's two. Uh, the Politico, that's a left-wing Marxist uh, uh, publication online. Um, they have now admitted that Hunter, Lap, Hunter Biden's laptop, that at least some of the information on Hunter Biden's laptop is valid, is correct, you know, despite the fact that they have been pushing the story along with the whole entire left-wing media for, well, since it happened, that it was Russian disinformation. So now Politico is admitting that, hey, you know what? That is actually uh, what was on that laptop. Probably some of it is true. So they're admitting that. Uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, uh, basically admitted after being outed in a Bob Woodward book uh, that uh, he uh, had back channels to China during Donald Trump's uh, lame duck period, that he had conversations uh, behind Donald Trump's back with the Chinese. Uh, promising to warn them if there would be any kind of United States attack on the Chinese during Donald Trump's lame duck uh, period. Some may call that treason. Uh, and, and then finally, uh, the Durham investigation, which is uh, a special counsel looking into the origins of this nonsense Mueller report Russia bullshit as to where did all this basic nonsense come from that tied up the FBI uh, and the uh, Congress for two years trying to link Donald Trump to the Russians. Where did this all originate? Um, he actually did indict somebody. It was a Clinton lawyer uh, from 2016 named Michael Sussman. So that person was indicted uh, for lying to the FBI. So let's dig into this. Uh, like I said, we're going to try to get this all done in half an hour. I fixed my clock here in the barn, so that helps. So back here to the uh, FDA. And I don't pretend to you know, know how the FDA operates. I basically view it as a rubber stamp for whatever the administration wants, whatever administration's in there. You know, if an administration wants to ban smoking, well, then the FDA is going to vote, uh, come out with uh, advisories and votes uh, to ban smoking. Uh, so, you know, Biden wants these booster vote, uh, vaccines uh, because it helps advance his agenda of forcing Americans to accept his medical diktats, uh, whether we want them or not. 
Well, apparently, one of the, the FDA's bureaucratic things they do is, I guess they get together a bunch of scientists or doctors periodically as an advisory committee and discuss items that are before them and vote whether they endorse uh, what the government proposes to do. Um, I've read that these votes are non-binding. In other words, if uh, they go before the advisory committee and say, well, we all want to ban smoking and it's a uh, hundred, you know, 20 to nothing, you know, the government can come right back and say, eh, we're not banning smoking. You know, so the, the government, the FDA ultimately, I think, can do what it wants independent of these advisory panels. So at any rate, this advisory panel gets together to talk about these booster shots that Biden desperately wants to administer to every American uh, in, you know, undetermined frequency, I would argue, more frequent than not if Biden is, uh, you know, has his druthers. Well, they voted against it. 16 to 2. And people were making statements that were, you know, pretty anti-Biden or anti-vaccine. You know, here's one, and I've got this quote from a Politico article. So for you Democrats, this is coming from a Marxist uh, publication, so you must be right, correct? Because that's all you trust. A quote, and this is from Paul Offit of the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. And I used him just because I'm a big uh, CHOP and University of Penn fan. You know, the, uh, just when no one else could help and my father was dying, they fixed him. You know, th th there's a whole story to that, but we'll leave it at that. Uh, the University of Pennsylvania were the only ones that could fix him. Uh, so he's still here. Quote, while I would probably support a three-dose recommendation for those over 60 or 65, I really have trouble supporting this as written for anyone of greater than or equal to 16. That was Paul Offit of Children's Hospital, Pennsylvania. Uh, someone else made the comment that, hey, we got to make sure these vaccines are doing more good than harm with respect to younger people. It's like, well, yeah, duh, but, you know, God damn, someone said that out loud. I can't believe it. Amazing. Um, now, remember now, two high-ranking vaccine officials, that was how it was written in one of these articles, they resigned from the FDA very recently, and they both co-signed an article that was in the Lancet. I think that's how it's pronounced. L-A-N-C-E-T, Lancet which is apparently a scientific publication that all scientists respect or whatever, and whenever they think they have something important to say, scientists run to the Lancet and they write their articles and it gets published there. So the two officials that resigned from the FDA co-signed an article in the Lancet, this all happened within the last three weeks, saying that these booster shots, there's no science behind them. They're not justified. Furthermore, it would be better served to use these vaccinations that we're using on boosters to spread throughout the world to areas that haven't had a chance to get the vaccinations yet. So those people were strong, felt strongly enough about the Biden headlong rush to force people to get shot, 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 more shots. You've had a shot, you need another shot, you got to have a second shot, a third shot, a fourth shot. They felt strongly enough about that, dict that direction that Biden's taking that they resigned. They quit. Nobody quits high-ranking government jobs. It just doesn't happen. But they did it. They did it, and then they published their reasons, basically, why in The Lancet. So there is pushback coming on Biden's direction to force these continuing unending shots. Now, you know, I'm not putting too much into this just because ultimately Biden can do what he wants. As, as, as the article pointed out, non-binding, these votes really don't mean anything. So, you know, if they force, you know, what will probably happen is Biden will come up with some other panel and he'll have all those people in his pocket 
and they'll vote to say, oh, absolutely. They, they, they didn't have the right data. They, they didn't understand. That, that we, our esteemed colleagues, they, they, it's not that they're wrong. They just didn't have enough data. Hell, Fauci said as much already. So, you know, I'm not, it's, it's good. It's not great. It's good. It's just a little indication that some people are pushing back. Some people are pushing back. This is not a hopeless fight against this Leviathan that seemingly is just going to roll over and crush us. If we stand up, we can still win this. So, moderately hopeful good news there. Now, what, what else do we have here? Got to move on. Only got 20 minutes left. Like I said, this stuff is happening so fast. You know, it, it, that's how you know the world's in upheaval that things are not the way they should be. When this kind of major news happens every 36 to 48 hours, you know something's not going right in this country. So if you missed it, or to refresh your memory more like it, we skedaddled out of Afghanistan uh, in the most embarrassing fashion since ever. <laughs> it just... Uh, a pullout that a child could have managed better. Uh, and in the pullout, uh, ISIS, somebody, allegedly ISIS, set off a bomb, uh, killed um, numerous people, among which were 13 American servicemen. I think that number's right. So immediately thereafter, the Biden administration drone strikes what allegedly was what's been told to us an ISIS terrorist, killing him and his family. Boom. Immediate retaliata retaliation. Don't you mess with the United States. So very shortly after that, news starts floating out. Hey, wait a minute now. That, that dead guy, you know, Afghanistan, whereas it doesn't have the technology of, say, the United States, it's not the you know, the Stone Ages over there, they have things like radios and computers and cameras and ways to communicate with the outside world. So immediately word starts filtering out that, hey, that guy wasn't a terrorist. You killed Bob and his family. Bob was just some guy. What the hell? You guys are running around saying you killed the nicest terrorist. If he was ISIS, it's news to us. And, uh, you know, everybody over there in Afghanistan is saying the same thing. Hey, that was, that was, I was just Bob. I mean, what the hell are you guys doing? Uh, so news of this has been leaking out and leaking out and leaking out. And questions have been asked and asked and asked here for the last four or five weeks. And, the, you know, the Biden administration pretty steadfastly says, you know, despite the fact that they wouldn't name this guy, they never named this guy. In any of the reports saying, we killed Ahmad Akawari, and it was he who masterminded that 13 men dead, men and women killed in the uh, airport attack. No, they never named him. They just like, oh, yeah, we killed the, we killed the terrorists. No, we don't need to know who. That's secret. I mean, God, we can't tell you who. That would be, you know, divulging uh, methods and uh, uh, p procedures. We can't do that. So, you know, it's all secret, and everybody's been asking, so exactly who did you kill? Because, you know, those 10, 15, 10,000 people over there in Afghanistan are saying you killed Bob, who was not a terrorist. So now we admit, finally, you know, last Friday, the Pentagon quietly put it out. Yeah, all right, we, we admit we, we killed Bob. And he wasn't a terrorist. Uh, <laughs> how about those mats? You know, how about those mats? Yeah, that's it. So, <laughs> are we going to dig into this? Do we care? Or is this just going to be chalked up to, you know, the cherry on the Sunday of a complete fucked up deal that, you know, pulling out, hey, we killed, what, 10 uh, Afghanistan people and their kids? Come on, that's, that's child's play. The Taliban's probably killing 10 times that every day. So, who cares, right? You know, the other part, I guess, is we could dig into is, well, who thought it was a good idea to lie to everybody for the last six weeks? Uh, the other question we could ask is, who gave the order to whack Bob? You know, wh wh who decided, hey, let's go, let's go kill that guy 
What's his name? Uh, that's Bob, sir. Do we think he's involved in ISIS? We really don't know, sir. Ah, he'll do just as well. And who did that? Do we get to know that? Are we going to find that out? Or do we deserve to know that? I guess we don't. I mean, you know, that's the basic party line from the Biden administration. You, you don't get to know these things. Hey, be you know, thankful that we admitted at all that we killed Bob. You know, you, we could just keep lying to you. So, you know, something that if Trump did, uh, the uh, left would burn this country to the ground. But when their guy does it, you know, just silence. I, I just like some Democrats sometimes to acknowledge their hypocrisy. Just acknowledge your hypocrisy. If you actually said it one time, I'd almost have respect for you. Yep, I'm a hypocrite. I'm a Democrat. But no, you know, you very rarely get that. So, uh, uh, United States military screws up, kills 10 people uh, by accident. I assume by accident. We don't know. We can't, uh, you know, we have no way of answering, getting answers to these questions. So, but they've been lying to us. All right. Uh, Hunter Biden's laptop. This is the story that initially got me to declare this the politics barn because it was such a critical story in the weeks leading up to the 2020 election, for those of you that don't remember, Hunter Biden left a laptop for repair at a repair shop in Delaware and then never claimed it. You know, you're saying that's odd. Why would they? Rich people are not like you and I. I believe I'm uh, ripping off the F. Scott Fitzgerald quote from The Great Gatsby. The rich are not like you and I. They do things that you and I would say, what the hell? You're just going to leave a, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred dollar laptop. I mean, they do stuff like that. That's just how the rich operate. So I don't find it implausible at all that this happened. So the repairman, he sees there's stuff on there that he thinks is trouble. He turns it over to the FBI that promptly ignores it, files it, throws it in the warehouse with the lost Ark of the Covenant. Um, he also, though, gives a copy of it to Rudy Giuliani's lawyer, and ultimately, the New York Post gets a copy of it. So the Post runs this story. Hey, look, this is what's on Hunter Biden's laptop. I mean, look at all this stuff. There is major, major stuff here pointing to corruption, to crime, to all sort of things that the American people should know is going on about the family of the guy who is three weeks from being elected president. Everybody covered the story up. YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, The Washington Post, ABC, etc., 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 all covered it up. Uh, Politico, who we'll talk about more in a second, the aforementioned Politico, they ran a story saying, well, this is a, you know, Russian, Russian disinformation. This is all the classic hallmarks of Russian disinformation. It's probably just the Russians trying to influence the elections again. And a lot of stupid people bought that. I'm sorry. I said stupid. I didn't mean to say that because I can think of at least one person who said that to me, and I don't want to call them stupid. <sighs> Brainwashed. How about that? So, oh, okay. Uh, yeah. I mean, this is the Russians. It's like. Have you read the story at all? How would the Russians pull this off? It would be, they'd have to have agents stationed everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. So that was how the left just threw that away and have thrown it away to this day. I mean, do you hear anybody talking about Joe Biden's corruption that was pretty well documented in the laptop? Nobody talks about it. It's covered up to this day. Well, Politico now has admitted um, through their own independent reporting, I guess they had one of their correspondents uh, do research for his own book. And in that research, he independently confirmed that some of those emails that were on the laptop are genuine. You know, how did he confirm it? Well, he went to the actual people that were on the email chain. In other words, here's an email uh, to Hunter Biden. And he goes to the person who allegedly sent the email. Did you send this? Well, yeah. I mean, you want to see a copy of it? Here it is on my computer. You know, here's if I'm going to CC'd on an email in the uh, Biden laptop. 
Well, did you get a copy of this? Well, yeah, here it is. You know, see, just verbatim, just like yours. So they were able to verify, that, which is something we already knew. We all knew that the laptop was valid. Anybody with two brain cells rubbed together knew that. But I just thought it significant because, you know, those handful of brainwashed Democrats out there that are just maybe starting to think to themselves, God, maybe there's something wrong here. Maybe the guy I voted for is not the holy Christ and Jesus wrapped up in one. Maybe I should think a little bit here about whether Joe Biden's on my side. You know, maybe those people would just, because they're hearing it from a left-wing source that they trust, that maybe, there's a, that, and that left-wing source is Politico saying, hey, that laptop probably was accurate, probably is valid. So, hey, laptop valid, all that evidence of corruption, valid, just saying, a uh, uh, um, bat. See, it's a barn, and we occasionally have things in here like a bat. So, pretty sure it's a bat. Might be a bird. Well, my time is ticking away as I stare at the bat slash bird. But at any rate, uh, so critical news point there, you know. Now, the other critical news point that, about this story is why is Politico coming out with this? It, 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 they are controlled by the deep state, the Marxist, what have you. Why would they come out with this? I mean, they could have just taken their guy's book and squashed it and just said, you can't report that. This, this goes against our story, that that was Russian disinformation. You can't confirm that the president is corrupt. What the hell are you doing? I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe they're greasing the skids for Joe Biden to get 86th, you know, that they're going to throw this guy out. Uh, his Gallup rating is down to 43% approval. That's incredibly low, especially for a first term. This part of his term, first term, incredibly low. So, I, I'm, you know, things that would norm, normally I'd say that'd take forever. I mean, to get rid of Biden, I'd take several months and not years. They just, no one would attempt it. Things are falling apart so fast that things that normally would take a year or two to do could happen in a number of weeks. So that's where it's possible that the Marxists that control Biden, the puppet masters, are looking to maybe get rid of Grandpa Dementia there, that he could be on his way out. Uh, it's possible. I mean, uh, the, why, why would they bring out the uh, admit to the killing of the 10 uh, or whatever it was, civilians in Afghanistan? Why would they admit to that? You know, again, it's uh, their normal MO is just lie about it. Just lie forever. Doesn't matter. No one's ever going to, of importance, is ever going to call us on it. So we can just make shit up forever. Just lie forever. Why would they admit that? So I, I'm kind of thinking they're looking for a fall guy here. And Kamala Harris could be, you know, licking her chops, waiting in the wings as Grandpa Dementia gets tossed in the trash can. Very possible. All right, let's keep going. We got, uh, what, eight minutes left? All right. Uh, back to Millie, the uh, uh, guy. He's the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Millie. He admitted in the, I guess, he... He was first outed through Bob Woodward's book. Bob Woodward is of Wall, uh, Watergate fame. He was a reporter for the Washington Post. He helped develop and out the Nixon administration uh, in the Watergate scandal. Since then, he's now become the go-to writer for the deep state. Anytime anybody in the deep state has a message they want to get out there to the public, they call it Bob Woodward. So anytime Bob Woodward wants to write a book, he has no shortage of sources that want to put out their story. So it, it, does Woodward lie? Just for fun, let's say no. I have no idea if he does or not. But the sources that he talks to certainly do lie. So whether he's getting accurate information from these deep state sources, that's heads, tails, who the hell knows. But... You know, they know they can put whatever story they want out there. They can tell you that the Vulcans have landed 
in Iceland and now control Iceland and Dr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Spock is controlling Reykjavik and is plotting to make us all do uh, this. You know, they could tell you I can't do that. There you go. We're all going to live long and prosper. They could tell you anything. Uh, so uh, um, I lost my train of thought there with the Spock thing. Uh, back to Millie. Um, in the book. So uh, Woodward publishes the book and he says uh, Milley was interjecting himself between Trump and the button, basically. That he was going to make sure that in, during Trump's lame duck period that Trump didn't push the button. In other words, Trump just didn't go, <coughs> I've lost! I'm going to kill everyone! And then Trump, uh, Milley, would heroically step in front of him and go, No, you're not. I am chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Mark Milley, and I will save everyone. So in case Trump, in a fit of babiness, wanted to kill everyone, that Mark Milley would intercede. And he went as far as to call the Chinese to tell him this, that, you know, hey, don't worry, you and I, Chinese government, you, I, we're on the same page. I'm not going to let the United States attack you. I'll let you know if it gets out of hand and I can't handle it and you're going to get attacked. I'll let you know. But, you know, we're on the same page. So that conversation is documented somewhere. Will we ever see it? Probably not. Should we see it? I think we should. Millie basically has admitted that that conversation took place. You know, in as many words, he admitted he said that or did that. You know, he hasn't denied it. Some would call this treason. I mean, so I guess there are a number of takeaways I have here. You know, one, Trump is a bad judge of character, I would say. He has surrounded himself continually with deep state stooges, which I think anyone with a rudimentary knowledge of uh, uh, politics or Marxist politics could say, that's a deep state stooge you just put in that position. That guy's going to just stab you in the back every opportunity. What the hell did you do that for? But he just does it over and over again. So here's another one. You know, he, this guy took over, I think, around the fall of 2019. Trump nominated him. Trump wanted him. Trump got him. What happens? This guy stabs him in the back. Stabs him in the back. I would question if Milley was so horrified by Trump's behavior, you know, one, why did you want the job then to begin with? Why didn't you turn down the nomination from the president? Because you must have known by then. It, it, word leaks out. If you're a homicidal maniac in the goddamn White House, don't you think that kind of talk gets out? Don't you think it crosses the river to the fucking Pentagon? And they know, hey, there's a homicidal maniac in the White House. Well, Millie, yo, hell no. I want the Joint Chiefs of Staff job. I, I, I'm signing up for that. So now he's working for this homicidal maniac. And what does he say about it? Nothing. Nothing. Hell, there was an impeachment held. Uh, three, four days of testimony about whether Trump should be removed from office. So if Millie knows Trump's a homicidal maniac... Shouldn't he have said something during that impeachment uh, stuff? Shouldn't he have said something? Nothing. Silence. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little questionable here about Millie's judgment. Is he a homicidal maniac or is he not a homicidal maniac? You know, what? what is, uh, you know, where else did you substitute your judgment, General, in place of the uh, duly elected president? Where else did you do that? And this guy's still in there. He's still the Joint Chief. He's still the uh, chairman of the Joint Chiefs. There he is. You know, is there going to be any investigation of this? Is there any questions going to be asked of this? Like I said, the transcript of that call between Milley and the Chinese exists. Just like the one that Trump had with the Ukrainians that was produced within 24 hours by the Trump White House. This, has it been produced by the Biden White House? No. Has it been produced by the Pentagon? No. Is it ever going to be produced? No. So, you know, I would like to hear exactly how my current chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff conspired with an adversary. I'd like to hear that myself. 
I think you should want to hear that too. But, you know, again, these are huge, major stories, but they happen one right on top of the other, on top of the other. You don't have time to breathe. You don't have time to be outraged about one because you get run over by the next one. All right, lastly, we're going to cover another major thing here, but this is basically in the it just doesn't matter category, so we can do it really fast. John Durham, the special counsel, looking into the origins of the ridiculous hoax that Trump was in bed with the Russians that led to the two-year Mueller investigation. He finally indicted somebody, which, you know, if he had, he's never going to indict somebody in the uh, Durham pool. You lose. So I lost. I, I had he would never indict anyone. He actually indicted somebody. And if you had Michael Sussman in the pool, Michael Sussman, you win a lot of money because you're probably the only one that had him and you win the whole pool and it won't be divided up amongst others. Who is Sussman? Sussman worked for the Clinton campaign. He was a lawyer with, I think the firm was called Perkins and Coy. And they did a lot of Clinton campaign work in the uh, months leading up to the 16 election. Sussman peddled the hoax, the Russian hoax to the FBI that Trump's in bed with the Russians. Uh, the FBI asked him when he brought this crap, when these lies, these, this hoax to the FBI, they said, are you working for anybody, i.e. the Clinton campaign? No, this is just me as a patriotic American bringing you this very disturbing information that I believe you should investigate and talk about in the press. Okay, said the FBI, who is dying to do exactly that, and frankly, I think the FBI knew perfectly well that this information they were getting was generated by the Clinton campaign. You'd have to be a fucking idiot not to know that. But they were willing to accept his lie at face value. He lied to him, I guess, subsequently in the early 17, same lie. Are you, were you working for the Clinton campaign? No. No, oh, that's crazy talk. Well, apparently Durham somehow got hold of the billing records from the uh, law firm and Yes, you were working for the Clinton campaign. Here it is in the billing records, you know, meeting with FBI, bill it to Clinton campaign. So I would say Durham has him pretty well dead to rights that he was working for Clinton. He did lie. You know, he peddled this phony bullshit fake crap that the FBI then ran with for two years while fools like Comey and McCabe you know, looked under every rock, under every crevice, trying to find uh, crimes committed by Donald Trump, and ultimately came up with basically nothing. So, um, I view this as not that important, just because I don't see Sussman rolling on anyone else. He'll get, uh, you know, the same punishment the other lawyer that was uh, punished by Durham, uh, a slap on the wrist, you know, 30 days of... Uh, home con uh, confinement, he won't even lose his law license. So uh, nothing else is going to come of this. It just, it's just another indication, more proof, that Trump was never hooked up with the Russians. This was all a hoax perpetrated by the Clinton campaign and whatever deep state elite fuckers that uh, run with her uh, to get Trump, to steal the election, to cheat. You know, you talk about stealing elections. How you steal an election can be done a number of ways. In other words, you can stuff the ballot boxes. And I would say that happened, but I don't know to what degree that happened. In other words, I'm not prepared to say that Trump got more votes than Biden. I know that the Democrats cheated. I know that. So uh, was it enough to switch the result? I don't have proof of that. I don't know that happened, but I know this, running a hoax like this and dumping it in the media, getting the FBI to investigate your political opponent, that's cheating. That's terrible. That's a crime. That's a crime, and all kinds of crimes. I would argue so, uh, basically treason, although that word doesn't matter anymore because it happens damn near every day. And basically we're in a civil war, so when... You're in a civil war, the word like treason just really doesn't matter. But uh, then, you know, uh, also uh, blacking out a major story 
like the Hunter Biden laptop, that's a way of stealing an election. And that's what happened, you know, by hiding that critical information that, hey, the Democrat nominee, soon to be president, is corrupt as a $3 bill. That's a story that most Americans would probably have wanted to hear. Maybe they would have judged it for themselves and said, no, I don't believe it. But a lot of them never even got to hear it. That's called stealing an election. That's cheating. And that's what happened. And that's what continues to happen in this country. All right, we ran long. I tried hard, but we couldn't quite get it done in 30 minutes. Just too much news, too many critical stories. It's just happening so fast, so fast, so fast. You got to pay attention. You got to pay attention to how the country's being stolen from you. So we'll be back with probably more outrageous news of the other day about what the Marxists are up to as we try to, you know, hold our ground and stop them. Thanks for being here. Hit the like button if you like these kind of rants. Hey, if you're a Democrat and you say, this is all ridiculous. I believe Hunter, uh, Hunter Biden's laptop was Russian disinformation. I'd like to hear why. So go ahead and put that in the comments. Thanks, and I'll talk to you later. Eric Arnold, signing off.